We continue the adventures of the Honey Badger Diaries with James and Mira crossing through 14 countries in Africa. In this episode, James and Mira have to conquer the wet season of Zimbabwe, overnight thunder showers in the salt pans of Botswana, and being held up at gunpoint. Typical African trip, isn't it? This is their story. <laughs> Perhaps one difference between us and many of the other overlanders that we we met along the, the way and we did generally we wanted to do everything yeah uh, and that meant it was expensive we, we it cost us a lot of money but we couldn't we just couldn't drive past Kilimanjaro for example without climbing up it we couldn't go past the gorillas without going to see them yeah. um, but that's thousands like going to the Ngoro Ngoro crater um, so that was that was four hundred dollars yeah. The 24 hours guide. just no 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 we didn't need a guide um oh, yeah. wow. so just, you didn't need a th you didn't need a guy driving in the vehicle with you no. not at the time we no. only, we had only to needed that in, in the car, yeah. mountains we needed one yeah poor guy we like stuffed him in the back but um but no in the ngoro ngoro no need um but it was just expensive 400 dollars just to open the gate um but it's worth it, right? So it's worth it. If you, if you had gone past Ngoro, because you're driving through that beautiful road, getting onto the top of the crater, you've got that stunning view, and then down the other side, go into the crater. If you just kept on driving towards Serengeti Gate, what's the point? You know? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah we, we, came, we came the other way through the Serengeti. Right, and then around the lake. Way, yeah. but, 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 but ultimately, it was we just we wanted to see as much amazing stuff as, as we could and and that meant that it cost more and we broke the car more and we, we took longer it. in every area so like a lot of people we know or when we met them they'd have a six month timeline so they'd say they went to egypt to south africa in six months so they always had deadlines um and for us we, we were much more flexible about that going no if this is something we really want to see let's take the time to go and, and see it and experience so it in uganda you did you just do the gorillas, or did you manage to get? Um, did you, you did Rwanda as well, right? So you did Uganda, Rwanda. You went round Lake, Lake Victoria that way around. Uh, no, so we did. Uh, we went from the Maasai up into Uganda, went down into Kampala, picked up my sister, then headed straight into Burundi yeah. uh, National Park for the gorillas, and then we went back up uh, north. Did the crater lakes. Did the crater lakes, Queen Elizabeth Park. Uh, Murchison Falls, Jinja for the whitewater rafting, yeah. um, and then back down into Entebbe and Kampala, dropped my sister off, and then headed straight into Rwanda. Yeah. Uh, so that was kind of the approach that we did. Um, so yeah. we went basically in a big circle with Uganda. And Uganda, oh man, that's another country that's just such a surprise. I think that was probably the biggest surprise. Everywhere else we had done some research. Uganda was kind of like one of these places that was small. We didn't really think anything other than the gorillas. Uh, but to experience the whole country, um, was really 
Yeah, that, that was just, that was cool. Except for, except for Kampala, I mean, there it's gridlock. Oh, Kampala, it's, no, it's, it's a nightmare. And, we, yeah. and I have to say, we we were asked for more bribes yes. in Uganda than especially in Kampala, anywhere else. else. I think in Kampala we're averaging like six or seven swaps a day. Sometimes. More, more. Yeah. I, it was insane. Yeah. And we, yeah, you know, sometimes we have a bribe fridge in the front of the car, and they take a cold Mars bar or a Coke. Yeah. Um, and they they were, I would say. They, they were reasonable with their bribes and that and they wanted like ten twenty dollars yeah uh, but yeah but we got seven what, stops a day it's seventy dollars or one hundred and forty dollars right. a day it's not sustainable and so, so that's fuel so just using our fake driver's licenses you know we'd say look we don't have any cash here's my driver's license keep that and we'll drive to the nearest town and come back and yeah. they're like oh yeah driving license you're definitely going to come back and go see see you later um, yeah, we had a stash about that big of just laminated driving license. Driving yeah, you've licenses. probably heard of this, but it's quite a useful um, little trick to have. It was great because it, you know, ultimately we weren't speeding, we weren't doing anything wrong. They just wanted some money. Um, sometimes maybe we were speeding a little bit. Um, but yeah, I uh, experienced that through Uganda, I experienced that more through Tanzania. Tanzania with the, the white policeman, man, they they hounded me, and we yeah. managed eventually to do that with cigarettes and Coca Colas. Instead of yeah. instead of money, um, but Uganda never really had that. Although then again, it didn't, didn't spend much time in Uganda. Um, we we always pushed through to to get to Rwanda as quick as possible, and I spent a lot more time in Rwanda. That was interesting. Beautiful. We had the opposite. Yeah, we had very little time. Rwanda, in Rwanda was literally just. Uh, we just stayed in the capital for four days to fix the car again because we had the issues with the diff once again oh, whilst nice. we were in. Uh, but so the only other option was kind of head uh, towards uh, Lake Victoria and, and Tanzania and spend more time there or spend more time in Rwanda because we were we were that was one thing we did have booked was Kilimanjaro we, we booked it for yeah. a tour yeah so we Serengeti and, first yeah and we really wanted to see Gora, Gora Serengeti and Lake Victoria all all kind of um, yeah in that area we we end up just choosing to go into Tanzania and spending more time there instead okay. So then eventually you start now leaving your East African, you've cut your teeth, you are now seasoned overlanders by this time, and you start heading south where things start getting interesting because the southern part, east is still pretty tame. And then south things start getting, getting a little bit more hairy because the further south you get, people do get a little bit more aggressive, unfortunately, except for yeah. Namibia. Namibia, take Namibia out of this conversation. But as you go south, yeah. The, the Zulu tribes are a little bit closer and people are becoming a slightly more, uh, it's, it's a different culture compare, compared to yeah. East Africa where, you know, the animals, they love the animals, they love their nature reserves and down south it's more of a free for all. So yeah. how did you go from Rwanda? Which was your trip now from Rwanda? How did you get across? Did you go straight down? Well, we, or? No, we, no, we went Rwanda through Tanzania. We spent a good chunk of time there. Yeah. Uh, Went off to Zanzibar for our, our volunteer program, uh, teaching nursery. Okay, nursery. so you did spend time in Zanzibar. All right. So this is yeah, part yeah. of the volunteer work that was also given to you as as part of your part of the exactly. wedding. But this yeah. is also um, we we did a lot of uh, funding, um, kind of trying to get between GoFundMe and um, just through charity kind of uh, raffles and so on yeah. Yeah. before we left be able to donate to all of these different programs. So what the company that we work with is called African Impact and okay. they have uh, foundations that support these nonprofits. And so the, the Happy Foundation was the Happy, Africa Foundation. Happy Africa Foundation, which helped build schools in Zanzibar and Jambiani, which is one of the poorest areas in Zanzibar. Yeah. So, you know, again, so partly was either donations or part of the honeymoon gifts or some of the fundraising that we've done beforehand all went to these uh, programs. Plus obviously we paid for our own um, our own experiences working for these these different programs, and that one was one where we were teaching English and uh, nursery school kids. Mm. In and you obviously had to leave Honey Badger and Da, right? So you you took the yeah. first. Yeah, that was our first. Yeah, leaving. I, and that was another example. Like we could have taken the car over, but awesome. with all the faff and, and the time it would have taken, um, and the fact we didn't really need it, um, yeah. left it there. But that was. It was horrible, actually, because we were in such a beautiful routine by that point. Yeah. To have to find which boxes we're going to bring out and have to kind of repack everything. And just leaving security. I mean, we found it's a hostel right on the on the um, the the sea, 
in Dar es Salaam that it's is nice, basically yeah. great for exactly that. They yeah. know people want it. So you pay, I, I think it was $5 a day yeah. to keep your car parked in this, in this hostel. Um, how long was, How long would you be doing this work with the schools? How long would you be? Uh, two, weeks. two weeks, I think we were, two or three weeks. Two weeks yeah. okay. And then from there, we basically, as soon as we got to Dar es Salaam, we went and got our, our visas to get into Mozambique. So that was the approach that we were going to be doing. Okay. And that was very interesting. And you're absolutely wow. right, because basically by the time we got the visas and everything, the other thing that was going on in Mozambique was there, there was some re-elections. Yes. And a whole lot of politics. There was a whole, there was a full-on civil war. So, yeah, there was like lots of talk. And, and especially... Started, uh, started, Renamo started up again, yeah. 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 So literally, as soon as we crossed the borders, and I remember this, like what happened is when we went to get to, um, we got to the, bo the borders of Tanzania and Mozambique, and there's, you have two options. One is you literally ferry across the car on this tiny little boat, um, and you have to wait for the tides to be high enough for it to be able to do so. Or you have to go around the long way and hit the bridge. There's a, a connecting bridge where you, you do the, the kind of uh, border crossing. So we tried for three days at the river crossing point or the, see and and it, it was a no-go so we then had to drive the long way around headed back into the to, to the, the, the the bridge so that whole process took a long time but then as soon as we arrived in mozambique like literally within 20 minutes of driving through we hit a village and literally there was demonstrations uh riots kind of we happening on the, like yeah, people yeah, all around the car like waving sticks and signs like hundreds of people uh, yeah. and it was terrifying and that was our first ever real experience of okay oh shit this is now a bit more Again, the whole of the people factor is much scarier in Southern Africa. And that was our first experience of it. It, it did, it chilled out until we hit, um, uh, what's the capital? Maputo. Maputo. Yeah. James there. So, but we had a few, a few weeks in between where we, it was terrifying, and really sketchy in some places. But uh, Maputo, James, James got robbed for, what was it, $400 in the end? No, it was like, so that, this was... Um... We were with friends at the time. We'd been for a night out. We weren't in the honey badger. We were in a taxi. Um, and this was the election night. Um, and we were stopped by some policemen. Um, and they got us out of the car. And they basically stuck guns in our faces and said, empty your wallets. And when they saw we didn't have much, they then walked us to a, by this point, the taxi had gone. They walked us to a uh, cash machine. And we're like, right, em you know, give us everything you got. Yeah. Luckily, um, the <laughs> cash machine there would only let you take out a maximum of two hundred and fifty dollars or whatever the equivalent was. Yeah, uh, still a, a sting, but not the end of the world. Um, and what they didn't know is that you can keep yeah. going and Drawing, yeah. more. Um, but I was like, look, see, it's this is the maximum I can take out, and gave it to them, and, um, yeah. and that was that. But that was, yeah, that was quite unpleasant to be honest. Mm. Um, they were yeah. drunk and AK-47s. Um, they weren't really police. They were more kind of paramilitary something or other. Yeah. Um, so it was a bit dodgy. But ultimately, we gave them $250 and got home and it was fine. But yeah, yeah, generally, if you play the game, you can get away yeah. with it. But it's, it's amazing yeah. how things start changing as you ch change the regions and as you move. And every, every country obviously has its quirks. But... As you're changing into different regions, it just becomes a whole different animal. And you've got to, you know, as of when you guys arrived in, our, uh, in, in Mombasa for the first time, that getting used to Africa, you've got to get used to every single country, get in there and then say, okay, this is how I communicate. You know, be less. Yeah. Less of yeah. 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 And I think I remember this again very clearly. It's the first probably three or four days. The first thing we do is we get a SIM card from the country. We try and figure out the bank system, the cash system, because getting cash in Africa is a, a nightmare. Impossible. What kind of food can I actually have access to? Is it like decent meat? Like Ethiopia, we didn't touch the meat for a whole month. We just, no, no way are we touching any. And this is where we wish we had a freezer because oh, yeah, I forgot about that. we just, just didn't, yeah, we can eat meat. It's just disgusting. Um, and, and so, yeah, so every, every country you arrived in, we spent four or five days figuring it out. What is it we need to know? And then we kind of get into the routine of things. Uh, but it was, it can, and Mozambique was an interesting one. Also, though, like having said that, it was also just as incredible, uh, you know, as a, looking at adventure, the ocean. I mean, seriously, yeah. we saw so much diving in Mozambique. We, we got there for That's the whale season. Humpback yeah, whales, really. hundreds of humpback whales, whale sharks, 
manta rays, giant mantas, I mean, dolphins every single day. So and we've the got beaches, the beaches, you can just drive oh. for hundreds of kilometers down the beach. And weirdly, bread and chicken. Oh, yeah. Like we it's never, a, we never Portuguese bought chicken. Yeah, we, we oh. always bought meat from, uh, from supermarkets and cooked it ourselves. And we arrived yeah. there. God, it's so good. Fresh, beautiful bread every day. Yeah. An amazing chicken. Yeah. Uh, so that power, was. They call it, they call it pow. That's, that's yeah. The yeah. Um, right. It's absolutely gorgeous. Look, you've got you got two days to eat it before it goes solid rock hard, right? But it's. <laughs> but it's <laughs> it really is, and the culture it is, uh, is like the Mozambique, the former capital. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, built by the Portuguese. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, Mozambique was really uh, different, uh, unique, very was, unique. Yeah, a little bit dangerous on, on the police front from our experience, I suppose, of being yeah. robbed, and then we had the farmer at the border. But by then, thankfully, we made friends with an African farmer who threatened them that he knew some senior police person and got us through. But so that was a little bit dodgy, but not not a, not a disincentive to go there because it, the diving, the beaches, the culture, the food. No, no, and that's proper. That's a proper adventure as well. Mozambique is. I mean, they've now recently, uh, yeah, probably, yeah, they might have still been building it with you guys being there from Shai Shai all the way down to to Maputo. The beach road is now uh, what the rest of the world would probably call as a, a normal road. It's a pretty much a highway in African terms right now. So getting from from well, actually, all the way up to Enyamban, from Enyamban all the way to Mozambique, which used to be a ten-hour drive, you can do it in pretty much six hours now. It's a proper, proper road. Yeah, the speed limits are still. You still got to watch out for that. But once you go north of Enyamban towards Baira, and then even further north up to Tanzania, I mean, that's just rough country. That that's is very. There's yeah. there's no fences. There's elephants. There's lions. There's you name it. And the beaches, like you say, are absolutely spectacular. And it's wild, wild, wild west. I mean, that's what it yeah. is. Absolutely. Yeah. And two occasions. One, the Karimba. So that was one of our first experiences. We met some bikers in Pemba, who were Australian bikers doing a BMW overlanding. Um, and yeah. we went with them down this really crazy road to get to again a ferry that was going to cross us over into the Karimba. It's not taking our car. Yeah. We just parked the car in the middle of no, and this there's no security whatsoever. I mean, that was a stupid decision actually. If you think about yeah. it now, because we left it literally on the side of a beach and not not even anything around us but these little wooden boats, and paid this <laughs> this probably eleven year old kid and yeah. said, you know, say, keep your eye on the car and like let's hope everything goes well. Um, and uh, and then we got to the Karimbas and the and the winds had picked up, so we were stuck on the islands because we couldn't come off or come on. Uh, okay. So we. Did any of our diving there, but basically just got shit faced for four days in the Karimbas because there's nothing else to do. <laughs> uh, crazy. And also, got, I mean, um, yeah, one of the cars that was with us um, lost its. Uh, just the wheel nuts were falling off. Oh, no. They're just driving like. And, and we basically stopped for a break, and this guy came on a motorbike with this handful of wheel nuts. He's like, uh, by the way. <laughs> um, that was a bad car as well. That was a terrible car. And, well, we got, yeah. and, and that's why we've got these uh, maggots in our feet. Oh, God. The, the dust, um, sand, 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 sand love, jiggers. Sand flea love. Yes. Probably, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think I had 27. Yeah, we counted 27. Um, I case. thought it was like a Veruca, and we were trying to do these kind of various Veruca treatments. And then a, a guy that we were with, he thought he had a splinter in his finger. Yeah. He was just kind of digging around. He squeezed this little maggot out. Yeah. Oh, my God. And I said, what did it look like before, before? And he's like, well, you know, a little black dot and, the, and a little white surround. And I was like, I had a lot of those in my feet. And I just got my pen knife out and just started digging around in my, in my feet. And literally 27 of these things nasty. Um, <laughs> I found in my feet, um, which was interesting. I mean, no harm in the end. I mean, managed, right. we had first aid kit and disinfected so, it. Next time, Jensen Violet. Hot water, whole bunch of Jensen violets into a into a tub. Dip your feet in there. Wait twenty minutes, and they they're out. Really? Okay, yeah, that's good. Too. Your feet are purple for about three or four days, but you don't have any maggots <laughs> in your feet. At least, yeah, that at was least, not yeah, a, to get them out. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember I had to come back to Dubai for a, a visa run whilst we were there, and I and I thought, well, I'm going to see a dermatologist to, to check out my feet. Yeah. He had a good dig around with a scalpel. He was just fascinated that this was a, was a thing. 
but um, no, Nothing it was, it was TIA, this is Africa. Hello. Yep, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, All right, then Mozambique, yeah. you've uh, then obviously did South Africa. Did you do the smile of Africa or did you go Mozambique? No, we, we yeah, wanted to go time. from Mozambique into Malawi. But by this point, we'd had so you Maputo. I mean, you're all the way down. You're on the Kruger National Board. Yeah. That, yeah. that and also, um, we, we were basically going to come up the west, the, the west border. Yeah. Um, but we'd had so many problems with the car, and I think within a 24-hour period, we'd had six or seven punctures. Holy crap! Uh, and at one point, when we were driving towards the border, we just ran out of tire, and these holes were big, and so we couldn't fix them. So we just drove on a flat tire, which then disintegrated. I kind of cut it off with my knife. We were just driving on the steel rim. Uh, yeah. for 50 kilometers or so on a, yeah. on a dirt, dirt track. Right, dirt track right into the border. Um, on, a, on a steel Yeah. Uh, so, so we just needed to fix the car. We needed to get to Joburg and just fix it. So, and we were lucky. We met, we met this lovely farmer on the border. He got us through bribe-free. Uh, took us back to his farm. Took us to a place where we could get BF Goodrich tires because you cannot get them outside South Africa. Yeah. Um, and we got new new shoes for the car, and then got to Joburg and fixed like the compressor that had fallen through the wheel arch and um, another wheel on the back that had snapped off. The diff. Um, <laughs> That's the, the diff. Literally. The leaf springs. The the car just needed some love, and it got it in Joburg. Yeah. We spent yeah. like two weeks just, just fixing it up. Um, we didn't leave much. I basically just went from Joburg to Pretoria because there's that there's that one there's two two mechanics that are on the road between uh, Joburg and Pretoria, who basically are Land Cruiser guru gurus. Yeah. So so it was M one four by four, and and next to there actually there's this farmer. Yeah, the farmer. That's who uh, has like a welding shop. Yeah. And a bunch of antelope. It's just down the road from M one four by four. Lovely guy. Yeah. Like, proper. A, a proper, proper South African, Af South African yeah. farmer. Proper African, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A proper exactly. African, like, you know, white, white socks, sandals, <laughs> short shorts, big belly, <laughs> but a lovely, lovely man. Yeah. Um, he, he, he fixed up some bits for us. So, so we, the car got, got a lot of DLC there, yeah. put on some ARB leaf springs at last. Um, and uh, and from there we went up into Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, yeah. But then Zimbabwe again, we had the Antelope Park, which was the uh, Lion Rehabilitation Program that we, we spent over a month because that was Christmas, New Year's. So that was yeah. the first thing so we thought we need to chill out just for that time of the year. And it was one of those places where we arrived and just thought, this is awesome. This is awesome. Yeah. It really yeah. was. Um, so cool. We loved it. I mean, if we're not swimming with horses, we're walking with lions on. Looking after so you, elephants. You worked there for a couple of months, right? So you just did your volunteering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a month and a half. Uh, was this part of the plan, volunteering, or was it? Yeah, it was. It's quite an interesting program. The, the idea is, I mean, lots of people have tried to rehabilitate lions back into the wild, but it's incredibly difficult because they've yeah. become so complicated. Yeah. Um, and, and it's very difficult for individual lions to settle back into the wild without being killed by other lions. Yeah. Um, and equally difficult for a pride to kind of find the territory and so on. So you had different generations go, getting further and further away from human com contact, becoming more reliant on their own hunting abilities um, and ultimately with a view to release them. So it was quite a, quite a nice idea. Um, Especially us, at the time, because by this time, you know, most of, the, most of the national parks have been poached to pieces, right? So rehabilitating yeah. lions back into the national parks would be a great thing for Zimbabwe. Well, exactly. Absolutely. Um, Zimbabwe was a quite a nice surprise for us. I mean, we had heard so much shit, basically. Everybody was like, it's dangerous. The people are horrible. Um, you know, you're going to have so, so many. Yeah. And of course, they've had such a horrible history, especially in the last, you know, 20 so or so years. Uh, so we're, we were expecting to get in there and think, okay, this is just going to be, you know, one of these tough places that we're probably going to be in and out. Uh, but we were very pleasantly surprised. We I don't know if we were just lucky, but everything. Uh, I think, you know what? I think it's 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 got to do again, once again. Stay away from stay away from the cities. Yeah. The people and are back. You know, you take the two countries that surprised me the most in Africa is Rwanda and Zimbabwe. Yeah. And out of everything, the people are so friendly. The people are so willing to assist. 
It's so accommodating to the point that it becomes irritating. Yeah, but, yeah. Exactly. And really well, really well educated. Sorry, sorry, what's that? Really well educated in, in Zimbabwe. Yeah. I mean, that was, it, it, I mean, in all honesty, the, 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 the majority of conversations that we had with people, it, you're just kind of waiting for the point where they ask for some money. Yeah. And all small talk, and it's like ultimately they're going to ask for some money. Not so much in, in Zimbabwe. You can actually have a really fascinating conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Where there's just, no requirements, they they're not going to ask for money, they're you. just like interested. Yeah. So there was that, and it, and it was just beautiful. It was a nice, you know, in South Africa, for example, um, going on game drives there, it's just, it feels like a big zoo in Korea, for example. Yeah. Whereas in, in Zimbabwe, it was a, a bit of both. There was, what was the name of that? Manapools? No, well, Manapools was Yeah, Manapools is probably um, one of my favorite safaris in, in yeah. the entire. What was that other one on the south coast of Kariba? Matusa Donna. Matusa Donna. Oh, Matusa Donna. That's that a was, brutal. That, yeah. that was a, one of the hardest drives, actually, that yeah. we had in the whole trip. Again, um, rainy got and, stuck behind the river, uh, like a, a, a flash flood in Matusa Donna for like hours. Yeah, yeah. six hours we had to Yeah, it's because it's been, it, it hasn't been traveled, right? So those used to, those parks used to be insanely busy in the early 2000s going through to 2000 and probably 2008 2009 and for 10 years or by the time you got there seven years or so just untraveled so there's no there's no maintenance going on um no. and the no, same to zambia you go into zambia and you go into lua plains and you go to any of those places in zambia it's untouched it's yeah. beautiful it, yeah it really is and it's and it and by comparison like where we're paying Four hundred dollars to get into the Ngorongora. Here, it's like ten. Yeah, yeah. and everything around it because Botswana was expensive, Namibia somewhat. South Africa wasn't expensive for the safari. No, but... Namibia wasn't either. No. Botswana was a bit cheeky, but that was, you know, that uh, I, I can understand it there because a bit really more because they're investing. In yeah, uh, and trying to get into the Okavango, look, you need to fly in. Um, if you do Chobe yeah. and you do those national parks, I mean, those are. Uh, it's Ch Chobi and what's the other one? S uh, not Savu. Um... Uh, Sabuti. Yes. Sabuti, yeah. Sabuti, yeah. yeah. Um, and they're expensive, but you've got proper upmarket camping spots. And like you said, well, Mar there's actual bathrooms. Oh, yeah. it was, uh, we can believe it. You like go into these bathrooms and like there, there are showers <laughs> yeah. and like big things for washing up. There's and... actually a toilet, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we couldn't believe that. Yeah, yeah it was, that was that was a nice a nice Change. experience. Botswana, yeah. the best game actually, with the exception of um, the migration, which speaks for itself. Yeah, was Botswana by miles. You can yeah, get yeah. closer. There's so much more diversity. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty um, cool, and it's just beautiful. The plains there are just oof. Yeah, I love Botswana. Has amazing yeah. uh, nature. The salt plains, the Kalahari, the Okavango, the varieties it's just huge. Unique. Uh, did you did you actually go into the Okavango? Did you actually fly in and go and stay at any of the camps? Oh, we we, we drove in. There's a national park. You got Chobi, and then we did Savuti, and we kind of came round. And there's a town called Morn, I think. Yeah, Mount. Yeah, yeah, Mount. Yeah. Oh. And we went north from there, and there is a national park. Yeah. Uh, and we we that's where we we probably went did the deepest wading we've done in the car uh, yeah. just. To Exploring around there, it got quite deep sometimes. Yes, yeah, so you got first bridge, second bridge, third bridge, fourth bridge. <laughs> and, yeah. and the bridge, one of the bridges we drove over, we got a video of it somewhere. It's like, no, like it's, there is no bridge. It's just like planks of water floating on water, yeah. uh, sort of planks floating on water. Yeah. Uh, and it just great, disintegrated as we were on it. Um, I can't remember what that national park was called, but that was that was quite nice. And we and and that's where we met my parents. So we very nice. We did that. then we. And we went and we did a, a, a game drive for the first ever time with, like, not in the honey badger, but w it, with people who know what they're looking for mm. and spotters sitting on the front. Um, and the amount that we saw by compared, like, we'd love the, the independence of doing it ourselves, but yeah. when you've got people who, be, who that's their job, yeah. um, we saw so much more. And I we think the big so thing for us better. was when. Having because you're doing this a lot more now, obviously, you know, again, we've been doing this now for five, six, seven months, maybe. Yeah. And every 
car you're going to, you, you generally will look for the big five automatically. It's the first thing you kind of pick up on. But when you've been doing it for so long, you're no longer interested in seeing the big five anymore. Yeah. You really want to see, you know, the wild dogs, the, uh, uh, the, you honey, know, badgers. the honey badgers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. And so um, Botswana was a really good opportunity. But firstly, we're not driving. so And secondly, we had spotters who could tell us where to look for these things. So we we, yeah, we got to see a lot more things that and we had. And the bird like Yeah, yeah bird-like. it was... Um, that was good. That was really, yeah, that was really nice, actually. And and, and we, we say now, you know, lots of people will ask us, you know, where should we go on safari? And they're thinking Kenya or Tanzania. And they're great. But actually, to get up close... And for Dubai kind of people that want a bit of comfort and luxury, Botswana every day of the week. Yeah. Um, I mean, that whole trip, okay, you did it the other way around, obviously, and we're going to get to Namibia next. But if you get into Cape Town and, and you ship your vehicle to Cape Town and from Cape Town you go up, or you actually rent. I mean, there's so many rental safaris. Yeah. Fly good to go. Rent it. Um, you Namibia. did that um, in Kruger and Mozambique, didn't you? Yes, yes. It was- it's, no, you, you, like, cars, it's obviously so better to have your own car, but, yeah, but you, you, you're doing it for that. three weeks or four weeks, right? So you've got your 30 days yeah. vacation, flying to Cape Town, next day, hit the road, you're up Namibia coast, hit the skeleton coast, cross Absolutely. to cross to Atosha, into Caprivi Strip, down to Botswana, back into Joburg, and you're flying out. And you don't have to yeah. worry about anything. That is spectacular. And we met a lot of overlanders who were doing that actually whilst we were on that trip, so... Mm-hmm. That was the first time we really got to see individual cars who are, that are rented out anywhere else in Africa. It's not really a thing, I don't think so. Um, but that's, yeah, we, yeah, we've now considered it and even thought, oh, well, maybe we, if we were going to do South America with the kids now, you know, we've got two, yeah. um, might be easier. I mean, if we're doing something short-lived that we do the same thing, we just find a place where we can rent an overlanding car or a Unimog as uh, James, uh, that's his next <laughs> level. Yeah. Yeah. Wait for Tony to get a bit older so he can set up his own tent. eh? (laughs) Exactly. Um, (laughs) Yeah, that's something I'd love to do again. Actually, so the Okavango we loved. The salt plains. I have to say the salt plains were quite special. Um, Oh, that's right. It was Google (laughs) Island. There is that. But you know, just yeah, you did get there. I, I yeah. <laughs> you, you did get stuck there for a couple of days, and 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 I think there are a couple of signs, not one or two signs, that says "stick to the road." Yeah, and, and I'm sure <laughs> people that have been listening to this this far has realised, you know, James is not one for following the rules when it gets to. No, work. very well, much. I mean, but the, the point, uh, yeah, the, this this is a real case in point because that was a good experience. Like, it, 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 imagine being in this place where it's flat. 360 degrees, and, that, and there is nothing yeah, on the horizon. Yeah, nothing. The yeah. um, it's just complete, perfect isolation. Yeah. Um, and we, yeah, it was a bit cheeky. I mean, at times, because the salt plains, they might look quite nice. Uh, and to be fair, they were fine. We drove into one place where there was a 360, nothing. That night, there was a thunderstorm. Um, close by, I mean, we were certain we were going to be electrocuted in our in our tent. Um, luckily, we weren't. But the following day, we were on this little dry island of I don't know twenty meters squared, and it was beyond that bog, and that was it. Like we had no, we had to just go for it. Yeah. So we reversed up to the edge of the dry, and then just hit it as hard as we could, and we're just kind of sliding through. We made it. Oof. Just uh, it was sketchy. Yeah, and, and literally, yeah. I mean, it's a fascinating place though because we were literally in the middle of nowhere. Once the, the lightning and thunderstorm hit, we decided, okay, we'll wait a day because we have to wait for it to dry. There's nothing we can do, yeah. and nothing. Not a soul in sight for you no. know a good eight nine mm-hmm. hours, and then at one point I decide, all right, I'm gonna go uh, for a bathroom break, and I, I just like walk a couple of meters away from the car. And I'm sitting there and literally out of nowhere, <laughs> this man comes with 10 of his cows on a, on a horse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he basically, and I was just like, really? I mean, it had to be just this exact moment. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was even, even in the middle of nowhere, there will still be people in Africa. You can never yeah. fully yeah. be isolated. Look, it's worth, it's worth the risk. I mean, doing sour pans and doing Kuba Island and doing all that is definitely worth, worth the risk. Sticking to the main roads. Obviously not in the rainy season, 
but it's absolutely worth it. It's just such a pity that the people have messed up the baobab trees over there. But yeah. open blue, I mean, it's just big sky country. It's big Amazing, sky country. yeah. It's incredible. And it's then, nothing like before, so. Yeah. And nothing like East Africa. Like, the, there was nothing that I would be comparable to that. Nothing there? that we'd seen, really. No. And you get it a bit in Itosha in Namibia, but nowhere but you've near got the, you've got the light pollution, and, and, and as soon as you get into Namibia, the light pollution's there because obviously the big desert, right? I mean, the yeah. Kalahari Desert and the Namib Desert is the combined, it's large, it's massive, and the amount of sand, and if the wind blows, the light pollution unfortunately kills it there a little. Whereas there is so much moisture in the whole of Botswana that kind of dustiness disappears. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be a moon, but at night the stars light up that entire pan and you can walk oh, around yeah. as if you're in daylight. Yeah, it's amazing. It is yeah. exactly it like really that. Is, yes. Yeah. It's so cool. Um, oh, I miss it. So we, yeah, we, we, we did love that and the Kalahari. Uh, and the Kalahari really just because the game is so different. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah the battered boxes, boxes yeah. and Those all these cute. other kind of weird and wonderful things that we'd never seen before. Yeah. Uh, and then we kind of made it back up to the Okavango. What I, what I wanted to do, because we've been in Chobe right next to the river, we basically wanted to circumnavigate the whole of the Okavango. Yeah. And then there's another national park in Namibia that, with a campsite just on the other side of the river. Yeah. So we tried to do yeah. that. You want to do the whole panhandle, come around the bottom side from Mound, hit the bottom right. and then the panhandle into the Caprivi, yeah? Exactly. There was a reason we couldn't, though. What was well, the reason, the reason was, I mean... Did, I think Zimbabwe was the first place where, uh, sorry, Zambia was the first place where the weather was wrong. We were not in, Z in Zambia at the right time of year. And the Caprivi Strip, that became real again. So we went in, I remember there was, this, there was only one entrance to this national park. And in the visitor's book, it had been a month since any other tourist had entered. Oh, God, that's right. And we were like, there's got to be a reason for that, but let's check it out. 